All right, everybody, hello and welcome as always. I am Sean, this is In The Mixer, and it is something different this week. It's our one season one to save coming back for a year with Paris Saint-Germain. Our focus, our main goal, I did mention it in the last episode of the Isle of Man series. If you haven't gone back and watched that one, go and check it out. Uh, but is to win the Champions League this season. I kind of figured that League One, League Un, however you're supposed to pronounce it, is kind of a done deal, regardless of what we do in the division. And then any cup competitions, whatever else, we might play rotated squads, not worry too much about them. But I desperately want to focus on winning the Champions League with PSG, getting them their first European title, really, to speak of. And kind of pushing them to be, you know, the next level of European superpower, not just, you know, a big pain in the ass when it comes to transfers and things like that and showing interest in your wonder kids and your best players and whatever else in the game. I want them to move on and kind of become a powerhouse of world and continental football. It's a decent challenge. It's one that I'm kind of looking forward to. I think it's going to be good. We are basically going to get stuck straight in and what we probably will do is a few smash cuts into the future throughout the course of this episode where we add uh, you know, additional players to the squad where we kind of try and get rid of some people as well. We'll go through the tactic basically through the entire preseason and then depending on how long we've been going for, we will jump in and do maybe the first game of the season or if there's a French Super Cup or something to that effect. Um, but we are just going to jump straight into the game and get stuck straight in. Right, so as you guys can see here, I've just loaded up the top divisions in the top five leagues in Europe. That's basically the same structure that we had for the Manchester United save. If we were doing a long-term save, I'd have a whole lot more. I'd have additional divisions below. I'd have like South America, probably Serbia, a couple of other little different pockets of the world where you get fantastic regen players. But because it's short-term save, because it's just one season, we're going to look for established talent that we're going to try and bring in. And of course, we want to have our opponents in the Champions League at full strength. So they've got their full squads, they've got juniors available, all that sort of stuff as well. So this is what we're going to go with. And we're going to fire up the game pretty much straight away. Now, if you were here looking for the Isle of Man series, don't panic, it's coming back. We're just going to put these regular scheduled breaks throughout the course of the series, just to break it up a little bit so that people don't get bored of it, so that people don't worry too much about it. And because I know that I binge watch certain series at certain points, uh, if people do want to watch it that way, they can go and slam through a whole bunch without getting left too far behind. There's nothing worse than watching a great series on YouTube and the thumbnail gives away what's going on in the next episode before you've had a chance to do your catch up. So we're going to continue dropping these one season wonder series throughout the course of the year probably around each 20 episodes of Isle of Man, which is about every four weeks. If you have a club that you want to see me do a one season one to save with, chuck it down below, but also put in what you think the goal should be. It might be a lower division side that you want to see get promoted that year. It might be a team like PSG that you want to see conquer Europe. It might be someone like Liverpool who's looking to win their first Premier League title in whatever years it is now, 26 or something like that. As always, a tremendous amount of the content that you see on this channel is going to be driven by what you guys want to see. So by all means, let me know what teams you want to look at in the comments section below. And here we go. Pretty much straight in, Sean in the mix. I'm going to keep this. This is the same profile that we used last time when we were Manchester United. Uh, it's basically just a standard pro license and global level footballer. I'm not going to worry too much with a one season save about building up my reputation, all that sort of stuff. Worrying about having to control the dressing room, all that shit. This one is purely focused on the tactic and how much success we can potentially have in a year. And the first bit we see PSG higher in the mixer as their manager. Eyebrows have been raised around the football world at the appointment of the 30 year old who has recently spent time away from club football. As, and he's sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at Parc de Prince. Uh, and I replaced Thomas Tuchel on 105k per week, which is absolutely insane. I think that's currently set to Australian dollar, so we'll get that sorted into Euro in a moment. Uh, Parc de Prince has 47,929 capacity, built in 1897, one of the oldest stadiums. Paris, uh, they last season finished first. They're expected to finish first this season. Leonardo is the director of football. Arno Michels will be my assistant manager. Sharp-looking kit there from the pack. And Nassar al Khalafi is the chairman who has welcomed us to the club. So obviously expectations are going to be huge for these guys. They've put the team into a 4-3-3. I have got a shape in mind that I do want to try and use. It's a little bit similar to this, but a little bit different as well. And it's just because I haven't done it yet, but I'll show you that in a moment. Strong looking side, um, two very good central defenders in Thiago Silva and Marquinhos. Bernat is a decent looking left-sided fullback. Munier, not 100% sure on. Uh, Ander Herrera and Garner is a little bit of an which I think is Issa, Issa Guy, I think. Uh, and then Varadi at the hole. Those two central midfielders are already kind of standing out of me somewhere where we might need improvement. And there are a bevy of French central midfielders in the world that we can look to bring in. Uh, Neymar on the left wing, Mbappe on the right. Cavani up top is what they've suggested. They've also got Icardi currently on loan and a few other players out on loan at other clubs who could potentially come back 
uh, at any point throughout the season if we need to bring them back in. Expectations from the board are to sign high reputation players, which is fine with me, uh, and then also to play attacking football, which is also fine with me as well. Long-term stuff, their five-year plan. I'm just going to read them out because they're interesting. Increase commercial revenue. Maintain the club's status as the most reputable team in France. Grow the club's reputation and work within a wage budget. All stuff that we're not going to have to worry about. It's a five-year plan uh, ongoing. We're just doing the one season. So, you know, effectively, I can't really get sacked if you think of it that way. Uh, win the league is the expectation. Win the trophy de champions. Not important as far as they're concerned. And then we have to reach the semifinals as a minimum of the Champions League. If we get knocked out before that, we might be in a little bit of trouble and the series might come to an end after an episode or two. This is where it gets interesting. Become the most reputable team in Europe, an expectation for the end of this year and become the most reputable team in the world. I nailed it the first two times I said it. I don't know why the third time uh, was too much for me, but those are massive, massive expectations. They're already actually pretty close uh, when you look at the reputation of the clubs in the division. I think it's just Real Madrid, Barcelona, and maybe Man City at the moment that are above them. Uh, and you'd expect, hopefully, in the next 12 months, more teams like Liverpool and whoever else will get higher up the divisions and a little bit above them as well. So definitely all achievable stuff, but we have to win the Champions League if we're going to do it. Uh, I'm not going to. I'll do the press conference. That's fine. I don't need the intersquads friendly, and I don't. And I would like an advice report from our staff. I've saved. I've adjusted everything to Euros so that it looks a little bit more true to life. And what I'm also going to do is change that horrific looking face. There we go. Much better. Looks just like the rest of the pack that we've got. Uh, tactics I'm not going to worry about for now. Club vision and expectations we already know about. We're going to accept each of those. And then we want to have a look at the squad report is the main one that I want to look at. So let's start it here. Look at squad depth. So Mbappe, they're already saying, is the best striker that we have available, which is really interesting. Neymar is the best left winger. Uh, they've got Angel de Maria on the right. I wonder what would happen if we moved it to a 4-3-3. Or oh, I'll show you guys now. I want to play a 4 2 3 1. I haven't done it so far in the season, and I just kind of want to try different things in this episode or in this series, I should say. So they're still saying Mbappe is the best striker, Neymar is the best left winger, Mbappe is the best right winger as well. I'll be honest, I hadn't really thought about Mbappe up top, but maybe that kind of gives me something to think about, something to do a little bit differently. Uh, Varadi is the best midfielder, is to be expected. Herrera and Gay as the ones underneath that. Uh, Neymar is the best number 10. That might be an area that we look to strengthen and bring someone in for. Again, a whole bunch of different French options that we could look at. Bernat's perhaps a little bit weak. So defensively, they're fullbacks and I think a couple of the additional central midfielders are where we need to look at. And obviously, number 10 is going to be a big one as well. Keelan Navas, three and a half star in goal. Sergio Rico is the backup. That's fine. Like, I'm not worried too much about that. And Silva and Marquinhos' as a central defensive partnership is going to be great. We're going to effectively build out like kind of our shape and formation based on what they're suggesting here. Uh, but the only one that's really kind of the question that I've got to ask myself, what am I doing with Kylian Mbappe? He's one of the best players in the game. We know that. Phenomenal acceleration, phenomenal pace. Is that better used out on the wing where he can try his tricks and cut inside and do all these personal traits that he's got? Or do we play him up top and try and turn him into like an elite level Thierry on retype striker? I don't know. I don't know. We're just going to figure it out. We're going to wing it as we go and see what happens. Now, what we are going to do now is we're going to jump ahead a little bit. I'm going to put the tactic together, see what we're going to try and work on. There's a couple of different tactics that I want to try out throughout the course of this save and this series. So we're going to jump forward and do that. And we might also during that time put together a little short list of players that we want to try and bring in for each of the positions that we've identified here. Magic of editing, we're going to jump forward to that now. All right, so we are a couple of days ahead. Nothing particularly massive has happened during that time. We have worked out our tactic. We have put together a kind of a short list. Uh, and we have also gotten rid of some dead wood. And when I say gotten rid of, we haven't yet. We're just going to try and get rid of them. This is the tactic and shape that we're going to go with. So uh, basically looking at the squad that we already had and some of the players that we're going to try and bring in, I wanted to kind of give us a balanced uh, structure. We're using a contra le press, which is the French word for, I think, gig and pressing. I'm trusting Google Translate on this one. I don't speak French. And effectively what I want is it to be quite a balanced shape, formation, structure, whatever else is our default setting. And then depending on how the game's going, if we're winning with this, we don't have to change or adjust anything. But then we also have other options up our sleeve if things aren't going well or if we need to defend a lead or whatever else. Ideally, think of this as our default setting for like group stage games, home ties, whatever else. And then we have escalation points throughout the course of the series. The biggest one is away ties. Probably we'll test it out in the group stage. And then for the knockout legs, having like a really good counter attacking structure. And basically what I've done is this one here. Now, a huge shout out to FM Tree Cortista. I'll chuck a link to his channel in the description below. But effectively, he worked out this kind of like low block setup. It's a little bit different. You'd think it'd be more set to like a counter attacking mentality and whatever else. I've been desperate 
desperate to try it out. I haven't tested this at all yet, uh, but I've been desperate to try out what like a good counter-attacking structure will look like. It's very similar. It's just got the wingers dropping back a little bit and some of the support duties drop to defend uh, and a couple of, you know, the defend duties will go to even lower in the division. Really only two attacking structures. I just don't assume I'm going to get Neymar to defend at any point, so why even ask him to? Uh, and then also the pressing forward as well, staying a little bit further up to be the focal point of many of our counter-attacks. So this is what we're going to try and do. It's You see I've set it to PSG 4-4-1-1 counter. It's actually a positive mentality. It still uses the same tactical style that we had set up and what I've done differently to what Treek had done uh, was put together some different player roles based on the players that we have available. So I'm keen to test it out. It's like our away game type mentality or defender lead type mentality is what we're going to use it for. And then also, of course, we've got our gung-ho attacking one, which is a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more direct, super high intensity and a lot more attacking roles for that front four to try and chase a goal if we desperately need one, push the fullbacks on to support them a little bit more and hopefully hopefully uh, find a winner if we need to in late stages of a game. So that's the kind of three mentalities, three different kind of tweaks to the tactic that I'm going with. Again, it could all go out the window. They, these could go terribly. It could not work out the way that we want it to. Uh, we end up trashing it and getting rid of it. But at least we have options. We have enough flexibility in the squad. We've got enough different stuff that we want to work for. What I will now also show you is I'm going to bring it across here. Super high level detail, Excel spreadsheet. If you don't do your own depth charts, absolutely do it. It'll help you so much in your saves. Uh, our one season wonder here with PSG. I'll zoom in a little bit for it to make it bigger. Um, you can see I've kind of decided that I'm going to go with Cavani up top and Mauro Icardi is the backup just because there wasn't that much available in the transfer market that I thought we could get. It will mean Mbappe plays on the right wing. Uh, Di Maria will be the backup to him. Keeping Di Maria happy is going to be a bit tricky. Uh, Neymar, of course, on the left wing. And then you can see here there's a couple of different spaces where we've identified transfer targets that I want to try and go at. Uh, so Verratti will play and play in the starting lineup. I want to bring in like a proper number 10 and a proper box-to-box -box midfielder. I've got two in mind. We're going to see how we go in the transfer market. And I also want to try and bring in like two proper attacking fullbacks as well just to give us a little bit of extra depth uh, Bernat could do a job Munier could do a job but in reality I want us to be like world class at every position we might not be with some of the players I've identified and some of the players I think I can get but at least at least we're taking a step in the right direction uh, Thiago Silva and Marquinhos we already spoke about them they're set up perfectly as Thiago Silva recovering defender and Marquinhos as a stopper uh, we're going to continue working with that shape and structure in the back line and Keelan Navas he's more than sizable as a backer or sorry as a fullback not a fullback, he's a goalkeeper. Don't play him as a fullback. Don't ever play Keelan Navas as a fullback. Uh, but as a goalkeeper, a good sweeper keeper for us. Uh, he's going to do everything that we need him to do in this particular thing. I've just noticed this tab down the bottom called AC Milan, which we, of course, binned because AC Milan and a lot of Serie A football is racist and doesn't deserve a series. So one season wonder with PSG. I do this for all of my different saves, depending on where in the seasons we're up to, um, all the way back to our beta save. I've usually got one of these documents for the entire uh, FM cycle of that particular year. If you want to do your own, you should do it as well. It'll kind of help you with the squad planning and management and all that sort of stuff. But if we jump back into the game, we have identified some transfer targets. Now they are big ones. Some of them are stupid. Some of them I'm probably not going to get. But for the time being, we are going after mainly French talents that are playing overseas. The big one that we're, of course, trying to look to bring in is Paul Pogba. Not for the box-to-box -box role. I want to try and actually use him as a number 10 and play him as an advanced playmaker on support. I think he'll do well in the French division, and I think he'd do quite well in Champions League football as well. Uh, he's been at Man United for a while. We have had a bit accepted, and I've handed it over to Leonardo to try and get the contract stuff done. For better or worse, I've handed it over to Leonardo. We'll see what happens with that one. I'd love to bring him in. The other one I wanted to go after was N'Golo Kante for that box-to-box -box role. I cannot get him. Uh, there's no amount of money I can seemingly offer Chelsea that they're willing to take, and we actually don't have that much to work with, only 80 million euros. And yes, I understand 80 million euros, ridiculous. I shouldn't be saying that. Uh, I briefly looked at Raphael Varane. Um, I don't really need him, so I'll put that one to one side. He'll be like a nice to have. If we can bring him in, great, let's do it. If we don't have the cash, we're not going to worry about it. I briefly looked at Trent Alexander-Arnold for that right wing back spot, uh, but Liverpool do want quite a bit of money, and I think for the same amount that I could get for him, I could get one on each side. So there was a time when I was like, oh, we'll keep Juan Bernat on left back, uh, keep Kurzweil as the backup, and we'll bring in Alexander-Arnold on the right. But instead, I think I'm going to try and get two fullbacks, one being Lucas Digna, who you can see here, or Dine, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, he's been at Everton now for a season and a bit, French international, playing quite well. Uh, hopefully, we can bring him in, play him on that left-hand side. It's actually returned to PSG for him, uh, where he was briefly before he went to Roma and then Barcelona. Hopefully, he's going to want to join us. And then the other one I've gone after is Nelson Semedo. He was actually 
not on the transfer list, but wanted by a few other clubs. I haven't played with him before. I've seen him in a whole lot of like uh, draft series. I've seen him in a whole lot of other people's saves, but never had the opportunity to use him myself. A good win back with attack duties is what we want to see. So hopefully we can bring him in as well. Relatively cheap. I think it's 20 million euro up front and like 30 over the next three years. So expensive, but not destroying our wage budget or our transfer budget for this year. Uh, and then the other one that I want to try and bring in, he was my backup, my fallback. If I couldn't get Kante, I wanted to get Corentin Tolisso, who is who we're looking at here. Um, he's been at Olympic Lyon, where he started his career, and now Bayern for a good few seasons. A good box-to-box -box midfielder, which is what we need. He would come in and play ahead of Under Herrera, but if we end up playing Under Herrera, I'm not that worried about it either. That would be absolutely fine. But good, solid midfielder. Not the one that I wanted, but at 24 years of age, he should hopefully have a little bit more potential in him that we can try and coax out of him to take him to that next level. So I've got a few options here. We've got quite a few and I haven't quite gone like super deep dive yet and gone through, you know, like the French youth national teams to try and get high potential players or anything like that. I've just sort of had a look at high level players that are playing at a Champions League level already that we want to bring in to add to our squad and then hopefully take us through to the next level. Like Jan Valerie here might be a decent one right back currently at Southampton playing in the French under-19 side, he might be okay to bring in as like a backup option. Probably wants a lot of cash, but you know, like we've got a whole bunch of different stuff that we can do over the course of preseason to try and bring those guys in. Now, friendlies, we are just going to let our assistants and everyone take care of our friendlies. I've also let them set them up. I might add some additional ones in here. We've got good tests from across the continent. We're playing uh, Hannover from Germany, Viral from Spain, Fenerbahce from Turkey, Inter from Italy, and Gubbio, who are actually a local side, I believe. The first game, the first competitive fixture we've got is in August. It's the Trophy de Champions. I don't know who's actually in it. They don't tell me yet, uh, but apparently we are against whoever we're playing against. So uh, once that's drawn, that'll probably be the next game we do in this episode. But what I think we'll do is through the magic of editing, we're going to jump forward again, do a little bit of a time warp, uh, jump forward to that game, go through the squad, see who we've actually brought in, have a look at how our results have been, have a look how the tactics going and play our first competitive fixture and our first opportunity at Silverware. All right, and just like that, we are about a month further ahead. We've gone through our entire preseason. We've brought in some new players. Plans change from what I literally just told you 10 seconds ago, but uh, we've put together, I think, a very, very good squad that I'm very excited to play with in this season. I guess the best place to start is the transfers. Let's go through those now. Now, we did speak about the positions we wanted to bring people in, the positions we wanted to let people go in. Um, you can see here, this includes like transfers before I came. So what we might do is just filter by this to show you kind of the ones that I've brought in. Um, a lot of these guys were already at the club, but the couple that I have brought in are Nelson Semedo, who we did speak about beforehand, right, a fullback on attacking. Looks to be very solid. Uh, definitely improvement on Munier. Uh, so I felt we had to bring in a right fullback. We changed our mind on the left wing back position. Uh, Lucas Dinho's scout report came in. It wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Banat was pretty much the same. So instead, what we've done is we have brought... Bernat back up to play as the starter. Two and a half stars is fine. I'm not worried about it. We'll keep an eye on that position if we need to change something throughout the course of the year. And then his backup is going to be Mitchell Backer, a uh, young uh, Dutch left fullback. Uh, previously with Ajax, he was in the youth team. I brought him back up. He can fill in as a backup player for the squad. It's not going to be a massive issue for us. And then hopefully, if we get to January, we can maybe get some more money and try and bring in a stronger left back. There just aren't that many great options that are willing to come across the world, to be completely honest. Like, this is all the left backs and all the scout reports that we've got. Ben Chilwell might be a decent option. Alexandre would be a great option. But, like, can we actually realistically afford them? I thought Benjamin Mendy might be a decent shout, but they want, like, 200 million euro for him. We just don't have the cash. So um, we made a, that decision, and some of that decision came about by way of one player that we've picked up, which I'll show you guys now. Paolo Dibola, I've never managed him before in a football manager. He's always amongst the best players in the game very, very quickly. Still only 25 years old. It feels like he's been around forever. He's going to play as our number 10 for the season. Four-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential. The opportunity to get him actually came up. His, uh, I think it was his manager reached out saying that like he was, he was allowed to leave. And once we could pick him up, we brought him across... 80 million euro in the end a pretty decent like a decent chunk of money but like i think a decent wage for someone who is so good and is so young he's already an elite level footballer at any division and he's going to play mainly as the number 10 for us and give us a phenomenal front four of Cavani, Neymar, Mbappe and Dybala it does mean that there is another change to one of the guys that we have also brought in 
Paul Pogba would break him in for 78 million euros. Still, I think a very good price for a guy who's only 26. Four and a half, four star current ability, four and a half star potential. He will play a bit deeper. I've been using him as a box to box and he's been fine so far. He's got a lot of the key traits that you need for that role. If it's not working out though, we can change him to be an advanced playmaker on support or make use of him as I uh, which is his flexibility is going to be great for us. And if things do go kind of pear shaped, he can fill in as a deep line playmaker as well. Let's say Variety's having a bad game, want to bring someone off the bench. Uh, he can do both roles, which is going to be perfect for us. So it's a little bit of a change, but the lineup, uh, well, first, Go to our highly, highly, highly detailed Excel spreadsheet here. This is the lineup that we've gone with in the squad of 22 that we've got. I've also dropped in another youth goalkeeper just as a backup to give us a squad of 23 registered for the season. But very, very strong. Like that starting 11, I think, is pretty fantastic. Maybe left back is the only place you could say that we really need to strengthen, maybe, uh, and maybe in goal. But for a season one deal to only bring in three players and three players to be the quality of Nelson Semedo, Paul Pogba, and Paolo Dibola, I don't think we have anything that we could really complain about. And very rightly, we are expected to win the division at a canter at any point throughout the course of the year. But we know secretly between us that our focus is going to be the Champions League. Preseason schedule has gone fantastically well. I don't know who decides who gets different holidays throughout the course of an offseason. Most of the first team, the likes of uh, Neymar... Thiago Silva, Marquinhos, whoever else. They've been away. Like, they were given extended holidays for whatever reason. Idrissa Guy still isn't back. He's not back till the 9th of August, which is like the day the season starts. I don't know who has organized that. Kind of ridiculous, but there are a few players here who will be a little bit underdone in this first game that we're going to play, but it is a very strong squad that we have available. Neymar's got a knock. I'm just not going to risk him. I'd rather he was ready for the season. Nelson Tomato has a knock, but he should be fine for the day. But because of that, most of our preseason results have been like kind of, you know, rotated squads. Abdul Dalalo, Diallo, President Kimbembe, uh, Pablo Sarabia, Ander Herrera, Fadiga from the youth side. Like there's a bunch of different players' names in here that you would expect uh, probably wouldn't play during the course of the season. But we've still got good results. Uh, beat Uxair, beat Zenit, beat Hanover, beat Villarreal, Fenerbahce, Inter, Gubbio. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different players and teams from different countries to try and get us used to that continental style of competition and playing against different teams from different divisions and leagues around the world. I'm not sure if that works into the match engine. I think the match engine is just the match engine, but at least I can say that I've done due diligence and traveled around and played different teams from across the world. Uh, we are going to play Rennes in the Trophy de Champions, which of course, as a French national competition, is being played in China. It is our first chance at silverware. I'm not going to bother putting the suit jacket on, one, because it's hot, and two, because I can't be bothered. But we're going to jump straight in and have a look at the two lineups now. All right, and this is how we're lining up. Navas in goal, Marquinhos and Silva as the two central defenders, Bernat and Semedo as the fullbacks, both playing as a complete wingback and a wingback on attack, so they're definitely going to push on quite a bit. Variety will anchor and be our deep line playmaker on defend. Pogba as the box to box. Dibla will play as the advanced playmaker on support. Maria, will, Di Maria, sorry, will come in on the left wing for Neymar until he gets over that knock. Mbappe at right wing and Cavani leading the line up top. They're playing a very flat 4 3 3. Doesn't look like they've signed anyone during the offseason. It's very much their vanilla squad going into it. But they've got a couple of different debuts here that you can see. Uh, De Silva, their captain, looks to be relatively solid. Nothing spectacular at this division, but he's played quite a bit. Up top, Honu, who also doesn't look like he's going to rip off any posts or anything this year, but you never know with these games, given that they probably had a fuller preseason than we have, uh, potentially, they could cause us a few issues. Uh, we're going to passionately tell everyone we're the favourites, so go out and give everyone a performance to cheer for, and I'm going to assertively tell the defence that I have faith in them, because they haven't really played together so far, and I want them to get them settled as quickly as possible. Of course, we're going with our 4-2-3-1 balance style, just to see how it gets on. It's mainly the one that we've used. Well, this started fantastically, but Nat is automatically injured. And I've only got Diallo on the bench. What's his best role? Fullback on defend, fullback on support. Let's go fullback on defend. Let's just go with the safety first mentality. So that's great. We didn't buy a fullback during the uh, off season deliberately because I didn't want to pay the money for Lucas Digna and I kind of ran out of money. Dibla with the corner now, his first involvement towards Cavani. It's headed away. Pogba should get there first. We're in our sharp looking white third kit. Variety back to Thiago Silva. Variety Pogba again. We've got a 2v1 on the right if we can work it correctly. Instead, Thiago Silva goes all the way back to Keylor Navas, being forced to retreat. Ball forward to Variety midfield. Now we go out right to Mbappe, who's gotten goal side, and he's beaten the man to draw a penalty. We were kind of umming and ahhing about playing him up front or on the wing if he's going to continue getting him behind. Cavani to take. It's a good penalty, low and to the left of the keeper. But if Mbappe is going to continue getting him behind fullbacks like that and drawing fouls and stuff, I think we can be more than happy with him playing on the right-hand side. We'll check this one out in three dimensions. It's just a straightforward penalty. But it looks sharp. Cavani doesn't have his ponytail. Must have cut his hair during the offseason. And it smashes that one down and left to the keeper. 
30 minutes in, we are on top statistically speaking, but we are going to demand more just to try and find a second goal before half time. No highlights that we've seen from Wrens just yet, but usually that kind of makes me a bit nervous that the first highlight we see will be a goal. And now they do have a throw in on the left hand side. Goes back to Nanyon at full back. Cavani's won it back very well on halfway. If he can figure out a way to get a switch across, we did have a man open in Di Maria on the far side. And so we work it back to Navas. Now to Marquinhos. Works it out left to Diallo. Forward to Di Maria, who has picked up a knock. We might take him off at halftime. Pogba, ball out wide right for Di Mbappe, who's gotten him behind again and skips past one challenge, cuts it back for Cavani. Second goal of the season for Cavani and another assist for Kylian Mbappe. He is tearing them apart, that left fullback spot. And we'll check it out in three dimensions here how he actually goes around the player. It's a great ball here from Pogba on his left foot, sends Mbappe in towards the corner. How does he beat the man? No, it just walks past him and then cuts it back for Cavani. Fox in the box as you'd expect him to be. Smashes that one past the keeper on the stroke of half time. And a good performance. Like I'm not I'm not expecting the world immediately, but if this is how like convincingly we're gonna be set up against other teams in our division, we should be on track to do quite well and be able to rotate quite a bit during the season. Traore cuts it back to Hanu, and it's a good save from Keelan Navas. First sight that we've seen from Renz now, and they're gonna take the resulting corner as well. Moasa to take. I probably butchered that pronunciation. Di Marie gets it away. Tate's going to recover and look to get a ball back in the box. Instead, he resets to Grognier. Now De Silva, who we looked at in the build-up, their captain. Gellin back to De Silva. And the highlight comes to an end. So at halftime, 12 shots, 9 on target, 50% of the ball. They've had 5, 4, and 50%. But we are two goals to the good, and that's the most important part. We're going to say very happy the way things are going, lads. Keep it up. And I'm going to take off Di Maria. We don't want to risk that knock. We'll just bring on Julian Draxler. Just hidden behind my microphone there and hidden behind my head. It's it's back here. I promise he's back there. Draxler will come on and play the second half. Let's calmly tell him. Show me what you've got. I want to see a good display and see how he goes. Throw in here. Samedo to take on the right fullback spot. They managed to clear it away. A good tackle from Marquinhos wins the ball back. Dibala sends Samedo in behind. There's a man in the middle if he can find him. Looks for the cutback. No, it hangs it up now towards Draxler, who's come off the bench. It's an excellent save from the Rennes goalkeeper, who's Sain, I think is his name. Salin, maybe. Uh, Dibbler's going to take the resulting corner. Left foot's going to curl back towards Mbappe. Cleared away by the defence. Dibbler, again, looks for Pogba back post. Can he get the strike away? Well, he manages to find it eventually. It's pinballing around. They get it away, but only as far as Marquinhos, and the highlight comes to an end. So we are 2-0 up here, and we did talk about at the start of the episode testing out that counter-attacking tactic, just to lock down our kind of lock down, I guess, our stability in midfield. What I'm thinking I might do is let's just mix this up a little bit. Mbappe goes to an attacking winger. He's not really suited to that role or that shape, but I think he can do it. Actually, maybe we'll give him a rest and we'll bring on Sarabia at right back or at right midfield just to shore everything up just a little bit. And let's see how this counter-attacking shape, this low block actually looks in transition. Let's use get creative as well. See if we can't push everyone on to try and find an additional goal. They brought on Kamavinga, who of course is one of the best wonder kids in Football Manager this year. Cavani on a bursting run from inside his own half and gets a strike away. It wasn't a bad effort actually for his hat-trick goal. Bursting past players. Keeping an eye on it early. We've got Samito who's struggling for a little bit of conditioning, as is Pablo Dibala. We will kind of rotate and work through that, but because we've got a full week before the first game of the season, we do kind of have the luxury of a couple of rest days up our sleeves. Three minutes to be added on here. This should be the last highlight. There's about 20 seconds remaining. Leo Salika with the ball now for Renz in midfield. Ball across. Sarabia cuts it out well. Cavani plays it out left to Draxler. How are we going to go on the counter-attack here? There's bodies in the middle if he can get the right ball in. Instead, he goes all the way to the byline, cuts it back for Dibola, whose strike is closed down by the defense. If that ball across had been just a little bit quicker, we had so many bodies in the middle. Dibola with the ball now. Pefok heads it away. Pogba again should reset. Back to Marquinhos. Sarabia. And the referee calls full time. So it's our first trophy of the year. Nothing to complain about. A good 2-0 win. 23 shots in the end. 14 on target. 48% possession. They had 12, 10, and 52. But reality, as far as the highlights we saw, it looked comfortable. Assertively, congratulations, lads. I'm happy with your performance out there. And that is the first trophy in the cabinet. And we make our way all the way home from China. Back to Paris for the opening game of the season. Uh, on a hot summer's evening at Bao Arn Stadium, PSG's Thiago Silva lived the dream many of a supporter as he lifted the trophy to champions after PSG's 2-0 victory over Rennes. Cavani getting the man of the match award with an 8.6 rating. It was, in reality, Mbappe that tore them apart for both goals. Uh, Barnat has a twisted ankle, so he's out for a few weeks. De Marie's got a tight calf. And Navas keeps a clean sheet on his debut, which is great to see. Uh, we're going to send our assistant to do that pre-match press conference. And what I think we're going to do, what I think we should potentially look at, 
is maybe we'll come back in the next episode and have a look at our group stage in the Champions League and also do our first game of that group stage. Of course, we are focusing mainly on the Champions League for this save and for this series. So in reality, we do want to try and get as many of those games in as possible. And the first game of the group and examining who else we have in our group will be a good way to do that in episode two. Uh, and we may also potentially in that episode do the game against Nats or uh, Olympic Marseille or whoever it might be. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. As I said at the start of the episode, if you've got other saves, other series, other teams you want me to do a one-season wonder save with, let me know in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to work on your feedback. If you haven't already, go and check out our Isle of Man save. We're 40 episodes into the season. We're about to start League 2. That'll be up next week once we're through this save and this series. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Go and give us a follow over on Twitter. If you look at the links just down there, it's next to me. Uh, you can check out all our interactions within the community there. And also our Sunday night streams over on Twitch where we're doing our Employee of the Month save. Come and check them out. Sunday nights or Sunday mornings if you're over in the UK. But jump in, it's always good. But more than anything, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the continued support. I've been Sean and I'll see you all again in the mixer.